Hey, buddy. It's Carm here. I'm coming to you on a chilly and wet Thursday afternoon. Uh, not quite like it was on Sunday. <laughs> we had all that snow and uh, heavy winds, but uh, that melted pretty quick. And the last couple days we're in the mid-70s, and now we're getting cool again. But uh, it's that time of year and uh, in the Midwest. But uh, yeah, got a few more to show here that I've been revisiting lately. Uh, I'll start in with uh, one that, uh, if you've seen Gary's most recent video, he was uh, sort of highlighting this artist, uh, tying him in with uh, the band organ, as well as, uh, I guess, kind of various other progenitors of what could be called world music, and kind of the hybrid between that and you know, various jazz and, and improvised music. Uh, Nana Vasconcelos, the bush dance. I'm not sure if uh, Vasconcelos or Vasconcelos, never quite sure how to pronounce his name. But, uh, the late, great, uh, very distinctive Brazilian percussionist and vocalist. And Gary was sharing, showing various albums from uh, his career and uh, collaborations that he had done with uh, Egberto Gismonti and uh, an ECM and uh, also, Pat Metheny Group, which is where I actually first learned of him way back in high school. I'd heard uh, Off Ramp, and uh, you know, if you if you've if you ever heard his his voice, both his voice, you know, vocal voice as well as his percussion voice, in a sense, you know, the, the way he approaches various instruments, you, know, you never forget it. It's so distinctive. On here, though, this is quite different than. You know what I had previously heard. I've had this album for maybe 10 years now, and uh, it took me by surprise a little bit, just uh, considering he was more acoustically based, and uh, even as far as uh, you know the format and the uh, just the general style and approach. Uh, this is from 1987, recorded in '86, and came out in Antilles. He's also joined by uh, Arta Lindsay plays guitar in one of the cuts, and uh, Peter Scherer on keyboards, and Mario Toledo on guitar. Uh, Nana himself uh, sings, plays percussion, a little bit of keyboards, and uh, DMX, which I believe is a drum machine of the time. And uh, that's something that really st struck me about this album, is the, the use of drum machine, which uh, I hadn't heard on any of his other albums. and. Uh, you would think with, you know, you think, you know, drum machines from the 80s, it could always be a little bit, you know, dicey in a sense, depending on your taste. And um, it usually doesn't bother me, you know, just depending on how it's integrated into the overall soundscape or landscape. The way he uses it, though, the drum machine with his own percussion is, is quite seamless. And, uh, um, you know, throughout the album, there's, there's a real whimsy as you would have with a lot of his music. It doesn't sound like he's attempting a pop album, but he's in a way he's sort of trying to take a crack at that approach, like trying it, you know, sort of like trying on a garment, you know, that maybe you wouldn't normally wear, but somehow it makes it fit well or look good, you know, it, it, you know somehow uh, I think it works, you know, even though, it, again, it is quite uh, you know, different from his usual you know, and not just usual approach, but expected approach. Um, the tunes here are quite uh, short and catchy, and uh, I think one of them even has, or a few of them have lyrics, which is interesting hearing him sing a lead vocal with lyrics. Uh, Eyes and Smiles, which is written by uh, Arta Lindsay and Peter Scherer. But even on that, you can kind of hear his, you know, somewhat of his playfulness, which, you know, you, you really hear throughout his you know, music, however he's contributing to it. But uh, yeah, it's a very, really fun, upbeat album overall. I think it's really quite evocative too. Uh, even as much as you know what he had done in ECM, as far as you know his other solo work and collaborations. In a different way, though, it, it conjures up different imagery, uh, more like cityscapes. You could imagine kind of driving around. You know various various streets and just seeing various 
almost like a jump cut of different imagery when you're turning a corner and seeing an, a building or seeing somebody jump out at you or but it, you know it's more you know benevolent but um, I guess just more more the playful side of that sort of thing but uh, yeah if you like that uh, you like music that kind of skirts on the edge of pop but also has you know <laughs> Nana at the center of it I'd recommend checking it out it's, uh, it's definitely uh, different for that and uh, it, it, quite refreshing you know hearing this again after um, yeah, quite a few years I'd actually I'd listened to it about two weeks ago and then after you know, Gary done his video I thought I, I need to finally come on and talk about this but uh, yeah I definitely recommend it for another uh, another slice of what uh, he had done and next up here changing the direction uh, quite a bit Although staying in the same uh, era, uh, Shiho, uh, Japanese uh, synthesis, who I've been a fan of for for many years. Uh, this is it's actually what's playing in the background here, but I'll I'll show the tie-in with uh, the actual uh, the other thing here. But uh, I learned of this particular album, just called "The Body Is a Message of the Universe." From uh, Roger Coleman, he had showed this last year. I believe it was last year's Record Store Day, which um, I, I didn't go this year. And when I had gone in the past, I really wouldn't look at the list. Yeah, you know, I would just kind of go to a shop just for the sake of going. But I didn't know about this until he showed it, and uh, I couldn't order it up fast enough. Uh, just uh, just hearing about it. Originally uh, from 1987 final here. Uh, it was quite uh, quite rare, I guess out of print for many years and until they reissued it. But um, now what I didn't realize uh, until I got this home is that a lot of this album is already on, uh, on this CD, uh, Purple Sales, which I'd had for many many years. And it sought it out since I'd first heard it on uh, Musical Star Streams back in 1990. But uh, it, it didn't bother me though, just, uh, you know, it's nice having our music you know, on yet another format. And just, again, knowing that these are uh, you know, tied together in that way. Yeah, this originally came out in 87. Purple Sales came out in 89. But, um, you know, so it's mostly, I think, um, all but one cut on here, you know, made it onto Purple Sales. So if you're looking, you know, want to get into your music, uh, you can look at either spot. But um, you could probably hear, you know, it's very, uh, to me it's quite beautiful and uh, sparse and, and minimal, but um, you know, it plays with a great deal of restraint and uh, elegance. And uh, as someone who has a, uh, again, for being digital synthesis, she finds a way to take a like a more organic approach or you know more a little more natural than you might uh, at least the stereotype of certain 80s synthesizers is sounding a little too uh, you know cold and sterile she really seems to avoid that and um, I'll have to look and see what else is available because I know most of her discography you know, you'd have to order directly from Japan but, uh, you know, hopefully this will start uh, more things coming in for uh, greater availability. Oh, speaking of availability, <laughs> he's just he's just risen. He was out for a while. I didn't see him for at least a couple hours. He's out napping. But um, yeah, Shiho. Uh, the body is the message of the universe. Uh, yeah, it's a mostly solo synthesizer with a little bit of uh, bass playing. I think. Or, oh, here's, yeah, here's the insert. Oh, <laughs> we've been waiting for this. <laughs> okay, Gary, you got your uh, got your uh, sequel here. Oh, he's gonna <laughs> he's becoming the angry cinematographer as well as the director there. <laughs> Just knocking it over. But um, yeah, there's a insert here. Got a picture of her at the time. Yeah, she's joined also joined on here by uh, Tadashi Horio, an electric bass. I love this uh, imagery here. 
uh, yeah, another one uh, very much recommended. Hello. <laughs> and uh, well, finally here, uh, staying in Japan, but going back a decade, we have uh, Akira Ito, Inner Light of Life. Uh, this is something I'd, I picked up about maybe four or five years ago. It was at uh, Permanent Records, which is no longer permanent in the particular location. Uh, I believe he was the Far East family band, along with uh, Kataro and others. And superficially, he sounds quite a bit like Kataro. Maybe a mix between Kataro and uh, Sojiro, if you're familiar. Um, and this is actually recorded, I believe it was recorded and came out in 78. Yeah, 1978 on King Records, which um, Kataro's first album was also 78. So he uses some similar voicings and uh, timbres on the synthesizer, although it takes it in a, I wouldn't say a more grandiose direction, but maybe more multi layered and even multicolored, also using uh, acoustic strings as well as uh, uh, some uh, choir vocals. Somewhere between like a gospel choir and maybe somewhat like Eastern Orthodox choral music, a little bit, but but very much you know very distinctive um, you know, approach to it. And it does have you know the potential of getting grandiose, but it never quite does. Um, it's uh, I wouldn't say it's melancholy, but it has a real kind of romantic, at times kind of a wistful or nostalgic feel to it, but it's very dreamy and expansive, you know, much like the covers. Very, very beautiful. Um, it, it almost has a reverential feel to it. Um, you know, just that he's, yeah, just it, it really celebratory. If Maybe not in what you might say like a cheerful way, but just more of a, you know, just more of an inner directed way, uh, more introspective rather than you know, overtly celebratory or you know, just uh, yeah, more understated overall, even with all the layers there. But in incredibly beautiful album. I very re much recommend it. Uh, he's another uh, artist whose work is pretty hard to find uh, in the States overall, but there's a few, you know, few spots here and there. Yeah, there's his name there, Wait for the spelling. And yeah, the very Southern instrumentation got guitar and saxophone and uh, you know, several vocals but uh, yeah just beautiful stuff and uh, yeah just always uh, it, it you know it brings me back to wanting to hear more guitar in a way but it also makes me think oh, it'd be nice if he had done more along these lines but um, yeah just got to keep uh, you know, looking and listening for more of this thing this sort of thing uh, yeah, Akira Ito, Inner Light of Life. Yeah, another, uh, another gorgeous one. So, yeah, I think that's it. I just wanted to share these three. Um, yeah, as ever, as ever doing a lot of revisiting and uh, just you know, coming across all kinds of uh, unearthed gems here, which uh, you know, sometimes I forget that I even have or forget how, quite how good they were. Uh, I recently uh, stopped at the thrift, just checking out some things, and I don't go as often as I used to, but um, I know Tink had done a really nice video kind of giving tips on thrifting, saying, you know, in part, you know, you have to go often to really find uh, some gems, but uh, I thought, well, I'll just go and see what I find. I found some pretty interesting CDs there that I had would never think I would find in the thrift, and uh, maybe I'll show those in, a, in the, maybe the next video or the next couple. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to do it for now. Yeah, again, this is it's playing in the background. Purple Sails by Shiho. So, yeah, hope you're all doing well, and uh, the sun shining where you're at. Hopefully it'll be out here soon. And uh, from the newly awoken director and I, uh, till the next one. Peace, love, and joy.